Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called Only Company Projects. While in college, I had a co-op semester in a shop environment with a small company. My position was a designer with a product development team and there were not many tools available to make things. We were expected to produce concept prototypes out of cardstock and Elmer's glue. When our first presentation was met with disappointment since they just hired this new intern to improve the quality of deliverables, referring to me, I decided to do something about it. Over the next couple of weeks, I started bringing in my own tools for my personal shop. I had a whole menagerie of woodworking tools, automotive tools, my welder and even a couple of my 3D printers. I turned the Chinsey studio area into a respectable prototyping space. The next presentation went very well when we were able to show a very fancy model paired with CAD designs and the associated 3D prints, detailed woodwork and even bespoke metal details. Everyone was very happy and I got to work with my own tools at my job. It was good times. Then came the reversal. The company had originally hired me as part of its expansion. About two months after I had joined, roughly a month after I built their shop, the company was finally big enough to hire a single HR person. If you have ever had to compete with the mental gymnastics of human resources, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. One evening, I was staying late to work on some personal projects. My immediate supervisor and everyone I worked with were aware that I did this. The new HR lady was not. The day after, she called me in for a chat. It essentially went like this. Why did you leave so late after clocking out last night? I was just working on some personal projects. Okay, well, you can't use the company space for personal projects. It's against policy. Why? It has never been a problem before. Running a shop costs money. And if that money isn't invested into the company's projects, then it isn't a good use of company funds. Now, I know that running a shop costs some money in power, labor and maintenance. But I was clocked out and the tools were basically all my own personal tools. So I said, I was clocked out and only using my own tools. The company isn't actually spending anything for me to do my own work. Regardless, while on company property, you will only work on company projects. If you want to work on personal projects, you must do it in your own shop. I considered explaining how the shop is 95% all my tools and equipment. But I only had about a month left in my co-op before heading back to classes next semester. I was planning on taking my tools back by that time anyway, so cue malicious compliance. I concluded the conversation with the HR lady by asking for a transcription of her verdict in an email. I then waited until everyone had left work the next day, then spent about an hour rounding up all of my tools and putting them in the back of my truck. I took them home and the next day went into work to find my department in chaos. I was immediately called into my supervisor's office and sat down. My supervisor was a pretty chill guy, so he calmly asked why I cleaned out my stuff. I simply showed him the email from the HR lady. I explained that if I can only do company projects on company property, then I will also only use my personal property for personal projects. He laughed a bit to himself under his breath, asked me to forward the email to him and then dismissed me. For the next month, I happily glued pieces of paper together to make simple form models while the entire department fell apart. We were unable to complete promised prototypes for our biggest client, lost that client as a result and I left the company for good shortly thereafter. If you are going to run a company, it helps to provide your employees with the equipment they need to adequately do their job. The next story is called Do It Anyway. I used to work in manufacturing and was part of a process engineering team. The team would create areas for members to work in with specific equipment for the job. My job was to price up and order and install the equipment. The equipment was in kit form and every area needed a version of the kit, like a jigsaw. Some needed a 200 piece, some needed a thousand, but it was all the same bits. We were tasked with a new process the PEs figured out they wanted and I set about pricing it all up, using what I already had and created an order, receipt and install plan. The new process was 12 weeks array and the stuff I needed had a 6 week lead time. No problem. 
that was until the money man pulled all funding and the new director forced to install a new process with zero cost. Genius. So at 12 weeks to go, I told all the PEs there's gonna be no new equipment. I moved on to other tasks, abandoning all the kit work. We have weekly meetings where I report every week, well, I have no money, so no new kits. With 5 weeks to go, all the PEs and manufacturing teams eventually realize they are in trouble. Without the kits, they have massive increases in their process times and won't achieve the process. So they all go en masse to the money man. We need these kits. After a few days, one of my bosses, I had loads, comes to me and says, got you the money, order them kits. Well, it's a bit useless to ask now, I reply. All the kit plans are from 12 weeks ago and apart from the fact most of the PE's plans will have changed, the kits won't get here in time anyway. It's 4 weeks to go and the stuff needs to be ordered 6 weeks before. Just order it anyway, we'll sort it out, he demands. There's no point boss, that ship has sailed, this supplier won't be able to deliver. Right, let's go talk to the supplier. So off we go on a 3 hour drive, where my boss asks the supplier, what can we do to get the kits on time? Order it when he told you to. But whatever we do now, I cannot guarantee when you will get it, so plan for 6 weeks. I was asked to leave the room, where I assume they discussed money. I will leave, not certain, the original cost I had priced up was nearly doubled. So back in the office the next day, with 4 weeks to go. The boss comes to me and says, can you create a receiving plan for the kids, please? So I do, with a 6 week lead time, to arrive 2 weeks later than we needed. I show the boss. Change the receiving date to 4 weeks, not 6. But that's not correct boss. Just do it, I'll lean on the supplier and get it sorted. I redo the plan with a 4 week lead time, not 6. I print off a couple of copies. Give one to boss 1, then go straight to another boss, 2, and inform him of what's going on. Boss 2 thanks me for the info and follows boss 1 into a manager meeting, where sure enough boss 1 tells everyone the kids will be here in 4 weeks. Lots of well done and good job, I slept upon boss 1. In the next 4 weeks boss 1 rings the supplier every day and reports back everything is peachy. Boss 2 gets me to follow up daily with suppliers and it's far from peachy. They are in chaos trying to get multiple kids together with zero prep and short lead time. Install day arrives. The supplier has not been ready. Boss 1 insists they send what they have. Boss 1 feeds back that there is a delay. Upper management is furious. Who told you that it would be ready? I was just going off the receiving schedule. Boss 2 interjects. Excuse me, but my equipment guy gave me a plan that did say 6 weeks. Who is doing two different schedules? There's obviously been a mistake. I'll investigate. Where did you get that schedule? Let's take this outside this meeting and I fully brief you. Remember I said it's like a jigsaw? On the first delivery, the supplier sent the corner pieces. For every kit. The next day, the bottom edge pieces. For every kit. The next, the top edge pieces. For every kit. Basically, we ended up receiving a bit of every jigsaw every day. For two weeks. So six weeks after ordering, all the jigsaws were in. Exactly like I told them they would be. Thanks to a bit of jiggery pokery on my part, we managed with my excellent team to install kits daily by using the new stuff and bastardizing old stuff. I was kind of the face of the kids, so I wanted it in to say face willy. No one ever asked me about the schedules and boss 2 tells me that the right people found out what happened. Boss 1 was told that he needed to relocate to another country or there wasn't a position for him anymore. So he basically was forced to leave our side. I eventually had my fill too. I left soon after. Who wants to be in a job where the very thing they employ you to do, they tell you you are wrong and ignore you then ask you to pick up the pieces of the wreckage afterward. The last story is called Chill Job. For just about the last three decades I have been designing software. I've gotten pretty decent at it too. There are of course challenges, like insane business requirements, or ridiculous deliverable timelines, or micromanaging product owners, or the ever popular design by committee. But the worst, and I mean worst, is that everybody who uses software thinks they know how to design it. Spoiler alert, they do not. There are design rules, there are best practices, there are laws, there are nuances to accessibility and localization, there are technical constraints. Try to explain that to a stakeholder who can barely spell HTML and thinks they are a wizard with MS Paint and savor the empty stare and vacant eyes. But hey, they've worked there for years, so they know best. 
Well, a few years ago, I took a gig at a small software company with a complex and well-established, if antiquated, niche software product. They wanted to modernize it and bring it to the web. Excellent, just what I specialize in. I settled in for a few months of learning the software, the customers and their needs and the industry it served. All was hunky-dory while I was off on Research Island, but the time came to start putting actual proposals together and doing some testing. This is where the real fun started. The team leader I was assigned to was a mediocre developer who'd failed up broad into management and argued with everything I said or proposed. No bird. The buttons should not all be scattered randomly on the page. Yes bird. Colors do actually need to be consistent and mean something. No bird. You shouldn't create a new custom widget to replace a well established ATMH control because you didn't like the thickness of a line. And so on. And because dealing with this idiot wasn't enough of a challenge. The business dev guy they threw at the team demanded that we create all specs and design artifacts during daily 5 hour workshop meetings, where everybody could have a say about everything. In Elmo's view, nobody would be above anyone else with their annoying skills or knowledge about anything. No, we would all talk it out. And hey, remember kids, there are no wrong answers. As a bonus, we'll hold our vote on every decision, because yeah, your uninformed opinion is just as valid as my 3 decades of experience. Design patterns, which would normally take me about an hour of wireframing, took 5 people a full week and the design they settled on was just bad. Trying to tell the team that I could generate some examples they could then take and adjust went over about as you'd expect. Not at all. The cherry on the scrap Sunday was the dev they brought in to prototype the thing. In a final attempt to help move things forward, I slapped together a very quick wireframe mockup in HTML, which sent Ernie the dev into a fury. How dare I invade his domain and create any code? That was his job. He demanded that he was the expert and I should let him take care of everything. For reference, he'd found Google's material design site and did a copy paste of their generic framework. Zero customization, zero color, zero personality. It was like selling a house with drywall installed, but no finish. As expected, his work was bad. And any feedback or suggestions, no matter how politely framed, Ramat would not only scorn, but anger. By now, not only was I a troublemaking elitist who thought I could do a better job than the team, I could, but now I was a complainer. Middle manager Bird went and went to his boss, who called me on the carpet for 15 minutes just as I was on my way out the door on a Friday. I didn't know what he was talking about, but apparently I wasn't a team player. I was instructed to only provide input when asked. Period. Malicious compliance incoming. I sat in meetings for hours, watching the clown show and counting down to lunchtime. Nobody asked my opinion, so nobody received my opinion. Questions to me were few and far between, and my replies were as neutral and generic as I could make them. At the end of the week, I started getting uninvited to the workshop meetings. Since that was my only deliverable, I sat at my desk with nothing else to do. At all. After all, I wasn't supposed to do anything without being asked. After about two weeks of this, I figured I'd cover myself a little and ask Bird's boss if there were any changes in his instructions. There were not. Apparently, I was doing exactly what they wanted. So back to my desk and more hours of waiting to go home. I didn't think this would go on forever. After all, the executive team who hired me into this role knew for a fact they needed my expertise. Their customers informed them almost daily of how outdated the software was. So I sat and did online training and read professional journals and surfed on my phone, all while watching the frantic pace of ready for the dumpster software being developed all around me. And sat and waited for 3 months. These idiots actually paid me to sit on my hands for more than 3 months. Now, although these clowns were utterly incompetent, the people who ran the company weren't. At some point they were going to discover what a garbage pile their minions were carefully splooging together and somebody was going to be blamed. Pretty obvious that the guy who hadn't participated for a quarter year would be the designated scapegoat. So I found another position and bailed before they managed to pull their head out long enough to find somebody to fire. As I was strolling out the door, they were planning on a big release to introduce their all new updated wonderful product. To be launched after all the bugs were ironed out. It's been 3 years since I left. The product never launched. To those who say, I'd love a job where I don't have to do anything. I'm sure for some people that would be heaven, but for me, having no purpose was a waste of life. If I'm going to spend my time on something, it's going to be something where I can make a difference. 
anything else is erased, plus the days dragged. And with that we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.